Welcome everyone this evening. My name is uh, Erica Belser. I'm the Assistant Director of External Relations and Stewardship in the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation. We are excited that you're able to join us this evening for today's webinar panel, Coffee Over Zoom, Networking in a Pandemic 2022. This webinar is brought to you by the Alumni Association's Career Week and by the Map Plus D Alumni Network. This webinar is being recorded, so you are consenting to that uh, by participating today. You have a lot of, or we have a lot of information here to cover. So we'll take a couple questions at the end of the webinar. Please submit your questions through the chat at any time during the presentation, and then we will take them um, at the end. Um, and I would like to, if I can share my screen here. And I would like to introduce uh, our presenter this evening, um, along with our panelists who will um, join in the presentation in just a bit. Ah, first I should introduce um, the introduction, or the, excuse me, the agenda here. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about what is networking, how to build a network. Then we'll have the panel discussion with Akil and the uh, three other panelists. And then we will answer your questions. And then we'll do a quick recap. So Akil Payant works for Combined Properties Inc. where he is responsible for leasing shopping centers to prospective retail tenants. He is active at the University of Maryland Alumni Association, where he chairs the Professional Development Committee for the Matt Plus D Alumni Network and developed the Dean's Internship Award in the School of Public Policy. Akil is passionate about educating people through real estate and looks to continue to uplift students through professional development opportunities. Akil received a Bachelor of Arts degree in criminology and ju criminal justice in 2017 and a master's in real estate development in 2019 from Maryland. Akil is a proud Terp and he will be recognized this Saturday in the Terrapin Club 30 Under 30 class of 2022 at Saturday's Terrapins versus Indiana Hoosiers basketball game. All right, all right. Well, Erica, thank you so very much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, as Erica said, my name is Akil Pyan. I'm so, so, so delighted to be here with you tonight. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in. Um, I hope everyone is learning a lot during career week, but today we are going to talk about net, the importance of networking. And everybody in here that's watching this is a professional. Whether you know it or not, you are a professional. So uh, we're going to talk as such. So, you know, what, what is networking? You know, professional networking is when you build relationships with other professionals, both in your career field and in other related fields. Networking allows you to foster relationships with others that are mutually beneficial to the careers of you and those in your network. The goal here is typically to be able to ask favors of people in your network and help them in return. So the theme of tonight will be how, how can we make this mutually beneficial? I wanted to make sure those two words were bolded. How can I eat? How can you eat? So that me and you are both full and leave from the table happy and secure. Next slide, please. So whom should I include in my professional network? Teachers and professors, for my undergrads or graduate students who are li listening to this, teachers and professors are single-handedly some of the best people to network. They have a wide range of people that they know, and they'll be more than happy to help you as well. Uh, classmates, again, for my undergraduates and, and graduates, you know, you'll be so amazed at what the person sitting next to you knows and how they can help you benefit. Uh, coworkers, if you're already in the professional field, your coworkers have a lot that they can share. They can uh, introduce you to a lot of people. Members of professional clubs or associations, 
you know, so uh, members of professional clubs associations, if you decide, you know, one day uh, to join the MAP Plus D alumni network, um, this could be a good per a good time to expand your network. I know through my experience uh, with the MAP Plus D alumni network or being in the UMD alumni association, I've been able to expand my professional network and meet a lot of interesting people, a lot of great people um, as well. And of course, friends and family. Let's not let's not forget about some of our best friends, some of the people that we are typically in social settings with. You'll be amazed at how much professional advice you could give them or they can give you or family members as well, the family members that you love so much, the family members that you connect with uh, so much. Don't be afraid to tap into them as well. Sometimes you may, might need to take off your family hat and put your professional hat on. It is completely okay or any others that you may think about as well. Next slide. Places and spaces in which to network. So networking events, if there are tons tons of networking events that happen in any industry that you are a part of. Um, you know, for me, it is ICSC, International Council of Shopping Centers. Um, you know, in your industry, it might be a planning networking event. It might be an architecture networking event. Make sure you take advantage of, of these networking events because that will expand, you know, how many people you know, all the knowledge that you can get. Same thing with conferences and expos. Take advantage of those opportunities. Now, for the next slide, we, I'm mean, excuse me, not for the next slide, for the next bullet point, online social media sites that are geared toward professionals. Look, we all have our phones and we all have Google. We all have these things. There's social media sites such as Instagram, Twitter, maybe even TikTok, whatever, whatever you use. While a lot of that is being used for entertainment purposes, you can use that, you can, you can utilize some of those sites to teach people or even learn stuff that you don't even know. There's plenty of examples that I can think of, of times where I've looked at a social media site and I've been like, wow, I didn't even know you could do that. I didn't even have that knowledge there. Um, and I didn't even know that source. I could get this information from that given source. Of course, a, a current job or an internship, again, getting a chance to meet if you're already whether you're already in the professional field or maybe you're not in the professional field, you're um, an undergrad or grad, this is an opportunity to, to expand your network as well. College alumni clubs, sports groups or teams uh, compose of professionals. And once again, uh, I wanna say social events. You may be going to uh, a, a, a house party or a brunch or whatever the case may be. And you may think, okay, well, we're just here to have fun, but you'll never, no, there's plenty of times where I've been in a social environment where I connect with another professional. And then next thing you know, 15 minutes to 30 minutes later, I've already established a new relationship, a professional relationship, and with someone that I could eventually do business with um, in the future. Next slide. So for the next few slides, I'm, I'm going to talk about how do I build my network? Okay, so I've already given you where we can get our network, how we can, so how can we exactly build our network? Have a clear goal in mind. Thinking about your networking goals ahead of time will maximize your networking effort, efforts. Focus on connections that matter and mutually beneficial relationships. As you continue to build your network, focus on connecting with people in positions you would like to work with in the future. So rule number one, before you decide to tap into that network, again, I'm just gonna say it again, you want to have a goal. It's like having a conversation with somebody. You don't want to just talk about nothing. <laughs> you want to talk about, you know, you want to have in my mind, okay, this is a real estate professional. I'm trying to get into the real estate field. What are some questions that I can ask him or her? Um, and, and you want to already kind of know exactly what you're getting into before you just jump into the fire. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Next slide. Find online networking opportunities. Uh, industry organizations, college career service departments, and alumni groups are hosting online networking events so people can, can connect safely. Talk to like-minded people in Facebook groups, Slack teams, or LinkedIn groups. So once again, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to, you know, be in person. Again, we're in a pandemic, if you didn't know that or not. Um, you know, you can utilize the networking opportunities online. 
uh, as well, just like how we talked about with social media and whatnot. Take advantage of all of that. Next slide. Share your skills and be clear about what you can offer. So whatever you're good at, make authentic connections by using your expertise to create value for other people. Okay, so this is very, very important. As I stated in the very, very beginning of this, you are a professional. Whether you know it or not, you are a professional. You have something to offer. You want to know why? Because you attend the University of Maryland College Park or you are an alum of the University of Maryland College Park. Therefore, you wouldn't have been able to get into University of Maryland College Park if you didn't have anything to offer. So, you know, don't be shy. Make sure you share your skills as much as possible. Just check in. Um, you know, it can be as simple as letting someone know you're thinking about them. I, I can think back to times where I've just called up a friend and said, hey, how are you doing? How are the, how's the family? You know, when you tap into that emotional connection with people, that'll make them more inclined to want to wanna help you out. Um, and then plus, you know, you want to make sure you're doing this genuinely as well, not just for the purpose of uh, networking. Even if you haven't reconnected in years, it's a great opportunity to call up that friend, call up that person um, that you haven't connected with, um, just to kind of start chatting a little bit and, and picking their brain on certain things. Next slide. Network with your colleagues. Uh, if you are already there, you know, at work, do a great job and be great to work with. The soft skills that will impress people the most in the remote work world are communication, time management, independence, and prioritization. So these are four big things. You know, you, you don't want to be that colleague where everybody's saying, okay, they, no one knows what they're thinking, or they're hard to work with, or they don't talk to people, they're not really social. Um, I mean, you want to make sure you want to be able to talk to your colleagues so that they know that you are on their team. Um, check in with your manager and team more often than you might otherwise and give them regular updates on your progress. And then, of course, offer help to help with other tasks if you can. Next slide. Use your connections to get an introduction. If you don't know somebody and you know somebody who knows somebody, have your people connect with their people. You understand what I'm saying? Tap into your current network for introductions to others in your field. A trusted intermediary can help organize, organize an initial meeting that will benefit both you and the new contact. Leverage your current network to, create, to increase your connections and offer additional mentors and mutually beneficial relationships. Next slide. Go beyond geography. So I know we've, we've talked about this uh, a little bit. So thank you, technology. We don't have to get a big old yellow book that some of us saw when we were little. Some of us saw our parents use when they, they were little to, you know, see whose phone number is what. We don't have to, you know, use that. We can literally go on our phone and contact somebody from across the country um, to gain more access to information. So we're not bound by location. Um, you know, or anything of that nature. Networking from home can even offer higher quality interactions when reaching out intentionally rather than striking up a conversation with whomever you run into at an event. So once again, going back to what we said, give that person a call, check in, you know, even if that person lives in a whole other country, if you have access to them and you uh, have a goal in mind, both of y'all have a goal in mind, Tap into that person. It doesn't have to be in the state of Maryland. It can, it can extend past that. Next slide. Follow up persistently, but don't be a pest. Look, if you've already sent the email, we are all busy people. We're professionals, right? So we're all busy people. You can contact someone, make sure that, you know, they receive your email. You can follow up for sure, but don't follow up if you followed up on Tuesday, don't follow up on Wednesday and then follow up on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and so on and so forth. You don't want to be annoying. Um, you want to make sure that they see you, but you don't you, you want to give them time to respond if your communication is via email, text message, and it's anything else from other than being in person. Next, next slide. Help out your contacts. Um, your network isn't only there to help you when you need it. Um, it's equally important that you be able to help out those in your network when they ask you for help or your advice. 
This shows that you respect your contacts and can increase the likelihood that they'll return the favor when you need help. So, you know, the purpose of this slide, lift while you climb. Um, you want to make sure that you're not just, you know, doing the climbing. You, you want to make sure that you're lifting up those as you learn, um, because the more you lift people up, the more inclined that they will be to help you in the future. Next slide. And then lastly, say thank you. Um, you know, this is just kind of, in my opinion, common manners, but uh, uh, it, when you say thank you, it can go a long, long way. Um, saying thank you, even though they're just two simple words, uh, a person will always remember when they helped you and you said thank you. Just like how you remember, you know, when you've helped a person and they said thank you. Take the time. If a person is taking the time to help expand your network then you want to take the time to show your gratitude uh, for them. Um, and you want to ma make sure to take the time to always, just always, always, always thank and say thank you to people um, as they continue to help you out. Okay. And now without further ado, we're going to go into our panel discussion and question and answer portion. Um, so first I would like to introduce Deuce, um, we go to the next slide. Yep, just wait one second to, sure. there we go, now everyone is spotlighted. Sure, there we go, there we go. All right, so uh, we have three panelists today. Um, first, I would like to introduce Richard Aju. Uh, Richard received his bachelor's degree from the University of Maryland in economics in 2017. He then went on to complete his master's of real estate development at the University of Maryland School of Architecture and Design in 2019. After graduating, Richard went on to work for a real estate development firm specializing in renovating and developing residential homes and buildings in the Washington, D.C. metro area. He currently specializes in investment property sales and rental property management. Richard also holds a real estate salesperson's license in D.C. and Maryland as well as a mortgage license in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Welcome, Richard. Next, we have Kyle Huck, a graduate of both the undergraduate and graduate architecture programs, as well as the Masters of Real Estate Development program from the University of Maryland. Kyle has found a foundation for his career in Washington, DC. With an interest in creating better spaces and buildings for people who, who live in and around DC, Kyle has worked on numerous projects spanning many typologies and scales. He is distinctively passionate about the design of people-oriented, energy-efficient, and economical residential and mixed-use developments in urban communities. He embraces design at all levels and works collaboratively with our clients and consultants. As a project manager, Kyle's responsibilities include site and zoning analysis, programming, site development, architectural design, and the multidisciplinary coordination of the construction documents. Kyle's areas of expertise include the design, documentation, and construction of multifamily projects, mixed use, mixed income developments, and urban master plans. He is a lead green associate, carries a construction document technology certification, and has recently passed, get this, all six architectural re uh, registration exams as well. Welcome, Kyle. And then last and certainly not least, uh, we have Sashin Scott. Sashin Scott is a passion for addressing low income housing issues through direct social services and policy work. Currently, she works for Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, um, in the Office of Healthy Homes as a technical assistant specialist. In this role, she provides policy and program guidance to communities in order to address health hazards in low-income housing. She also works with various nonprofit organizations and local and state government agencies to ensure proper grants management of federal funds. Prior to working for HUD, Sashin worked for Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development as a project manager in, division, in the Division of Neighborhood Revitalization. There, she focused on initiatives to address homelessness. Sashin Scott graduated from the University of Maryland School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation in 2019 with a master's degree in community planning. And she is also a member of the MAP plus D Alumni Network Board. Welcome to Sashin welcome to as well. 
So those are our panelists. We're going to jump right into the first question. So this question, I would like all the panelists to answer. And then afterwards, um, for the next several questions, people can jump in and, you know, as they please. Uh, the panelists can jump in as they, as they please. So question number one, what are the appropriate ways to inquire about job opportunities while networking? How can I let others know that I'm interested in connecting with them professionally and that finding work is a priority? Anybody can go. So I can jump in. I think um, there it just depends on the first of all, I want to say thank you for having me and thank you for the warm introduction. I appreciate it, um, Akil. I think it depends on the setting. Um, I think that it's always good, especially if you're establishing a new relationship. I think just to let the person know about, you know, just in opportunities that you're potentially interested in. I know for me, um, in my second year of the grad program, one way that I subtly um, mentioned that I was interested in um, job opportunities was that I was graduating soon. So I think that that's a nice way we're not, I don't think it's really good when you're getting to know someone or you have an initial interaction um, to just straight up ask for a job opportunity. But I think you can plant certain subtle seeds to say that that is something of interest. Um, and I know that uh, typically maybe around the second or third um, meeting. So back to your point about establishing that relationship and building that rapport, I think that's key first. And then leading into potential um, opportunity, asking about potential job opportunities um, and that you're looking to advance your skill set. I know that that's typically an easy way um, to, again, let people know that you're interested in job opportunities without necessarily um, explicitly saying that. And I think it also may depends on the, your level of comfort with the person and depending on who they are or where they are in your network. So if it's someone new, like I said, I would plant subtle seeds. But if it's someone that I've built a rapport with, I think it's easy to say, hey, I, you know, I, I know you work for so-and-so. I'm interested in learning a little bit more about what you do because I'm interested in that specific field. So I think that there's layers, um, but I, I think it's never, in my opinion, I think you always want to start out um, subtle and then build your way up to asking about those potential opportunities. I'm going to build off Sushin there. I think that was a great uh, overall response. Um, and thank you again, Akil, for the invitation to participate on this uh, panel tonight. Um, I'm also going to reference back to what Akil said before, is that chances are you know somebody who knows somebody, right? So you don't always have to reach out directly to somebody that you're networking with for a job. You might be able to put feelers out there and let people know that you might be in the market for a job or looking uh, to get experience in something. Um, and they might be able to reach out even wider to their network and mention your name to other people who will then in turn reach out to you about job openings. So keep that in mind. Um, and I think I want to pick you back off of Kyle as well. Um, one of the approaches that I took uh, when I was in my undergrad was doing the informational interview approach. Uh, so just reaching out to, you know, a new contact or, or somebody at an organization that, you know, is doing a role that you might be interested in doing um, and, and just finding out a little bit more about the job, what got them into that role and uh, any, any, you know, experiences that they've had that you can kind of learn off of. And then through that, you're building the relationship. Uh, if you have more questions that can segue into, you know, getting, getting comfortable with asking about opportunities and, and ways to get involved in the in the company. All right, thank you everyone for answering that. If we can go to the next question. All right, so we all know that, you know, sometimes you need to make sure that you present well through your words, but also through your appearance. We cannot forget to look good, right? So what are some professional do's and don'ts regarding your appearance and attire. So what is what are some tips to allow people to not get rejected before they can even open their mouth? 
anybody can answer. I can yeah. start this one off just because I love to talk about like workwear and professional attire. So I always say for a professional do, I think you should um, do what feels comfortable for you. So, you know, especially in this virtual space, I think that we don't necessarily always have to go super formal, but I would say as a don't, you don't want to be super informal where you're not necessarily being mindful of wearing a button down or maybe a tie or maybe a blazer. I know personally, I'm a blazer person. So it's easy for me to throw on a blazer on the virtual space and maybe have like sweatpants on and, you know, have like my um, professional attire from the waist up. So, but I think that there's, especially now, since we are virtual, there's different layers of dressing professional. So we don't necessarily have to um, I guess, sway to the overly professional side of how it once was before, um, you know, we've experienced this pandemic. But I think that you can dress um, in a way that is comfortable to your professional personal style, um, without not necessarily um, not feeling like you need to be super casual. Because um, again, to your point, Nikhil, this is a professional space, especially if you're um, cultivating a relationship with the new uh, co- contact you want to make sure that you professionally look your best um that's you know comfortable to you um and you know make a good first impression so i think do what's comfortable professionally but also remember that you don't want to be too casual given that you want to make a great lasting first impression or just a great professional um appearance what professional uh, appearance um you know presentation overall Anybody else want to jump in, Richard Kyle? I think Sushin kind of hit the, the topic on, on the head there. Um, there's no real, you know, guide to what to wear in every industry, right? It's uh, everybody makes their own decisions. You know, Steve Jobs wore black t-shirts every day, you know, find what makes you feel comfortable, but also represents you in a professional enough way. Uh, that, you know, you're treating yourself and your clients with the respect that you are a professional, right? You've, you've worked hard to get that job. You're working hard to stay in that job. Um, and you, and you want to establish yourself as a professional. Um, it's definitely been strange over the last two years, seen lots of various different, uh, levels of attire on virtual space. Um, but just, you know, keep that in mind The the vision of yourself that you're putting out there by what you wear. Yeah, you know, and I agree with every everything that everybody said. I think, you know, one thing I'll probably add is just, you know, match your industry. You know, make sure you match your industry. If if your industry is wearing suits, you might want to walk in there with a suit. If they're, you know, kind of on the more casual side, then then feel free to do so. It's just whatever it's all dependent upon your industry. Thank you, everyone. Uh, question number three, we've all heard this phrase. It's not about what you know, but who you know. Okay, you can know so many things and whatnot, but then at the same time, know nothing if you don't know anybody. People have said this. Do you agree with the statement? Why or why not? Beat the shame to the punch on this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think both are important, right? So what good are you if you know everybody, but you know nothing? Not that you're not really providing anybody any value, right? Akil was talking about this before. Part of a successful network is being able to provide value to people in your network. Um, but if you know nothing, then it's, it's not as successful. But if you don't know anybody and you know a lot of things, maybe you're not helping as many people as you could, right? So you got to strike a balance there. Um, but you know, think about knowing the right people and trying to strategize spending your time on networking with the right people who will help you get the opportunities that you're going for. I I would agree with what um, Kyle said too. Um, I think that um, for me, I, I am an introvert. So I, at one point in my career, always felt like um, 
I'll just let my work do the talking. It's like, no, I mean, that's good. Of course, I, um, I'm qualified and I have great work. But at the same time, you know, there's certain there's only so far your work alone can take you. And I think having a great relation, having a good um, network um, can also help to you to be exposed to a variety of different people and opportunities, in addition to you having great work, a good, great quality work. So I think um, they go hand in hand. And I think that in some areas, your network helps you to elevate your career. Um, and then other times, you know, your work helps you to get in the door. And then having that professional network um, helps you to, I, I know, especially in a new setting, a new professional setting, if you know someone there, or if you know uh, um, of someone, you know, someone within your network that works there, they can give you the inside scoop on um, where you may be working in a way where if you don't know anyone, you're kind of trying to, you're kind of going in not knowing, you know, the ins and out of the organization or the place that you work. So I think it's, it's a combination of both. And I, I would definitely agree with that. And and I just want to second that um, I I agree with everything that was said, um, but I I think I lean towards more of the who you know, especially uh, for those uh, of you that maybe you know just finishing or just about to enter the workforce. Um, you really want to focus on that networking aspect because you know it, it allows you an opportunity to get in the door where you know, you're in a playing field with a lot of people that may be coming from the same situation. Um, I myself, you know, most of the things, most of the things that I've done have all been relationship driven and, and landed me in the roles that I'm in now. So definitely focus on the networking. Perfect, perfect. Thank you everyone for answering that question. All right. So for the next question, if you could share a great experience or opportunity that has resulted from successful networking for our audience, that would be great. You know, what past network? And then also at the same time, do you have any networking experiences or maybe know of a networking experience from another person that was unsuccessful? And what would have you done differently? I'll start this one off. Um, I guess this is a question. I don't know if I should start with the unsuccessful. I think that's a little bit more interesting, but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like early on, I tried going to like networking events and um, not knowing the people in the room, obviously, and not being comfortable with myself. I think I, I came off a little bit too strong um, or, or too reserved. So I think, you know, getting comfortable uh, which is not always easy, but uh, getting comfortable um, just being who you are is, is, I think, an important way of like being successful at networking. Because again, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And if they can get to know, like, and trust you, then, you know, that that's a recipe for success. I think that's a great way to describe it. Know, like, and trust, um, Richard. Um, I know personally, and somebody put this in the chat that, you know, 80% of jobs are filled by networking. I've found that to be true. Most of the jobs that I've gotten or internships or opportunities have been through some form of networking from knowing people who, uh, you know, I like, they like, or, you know, we have some sort of mutual trust or mutual connection. Um, and Honestly, I don't really know if I have a, a bad networking experience. You know, maybe some experiences don't really lead to anything or, um, you know, or a job or opportunity. But, you know, as long as you stay in touch with somebody, I call that a success. So. Go ahead, oh, I was going to say, yeah, I, I would agree. I think um, for me a great experience um, from networking. I think it's um, how I got my current job. So I was apply I was initially applying for the position anyway, but I knew of um, a few of my a few folks from my network and my mentor who actually works for the organization um, was the agency that I work for. And I was able to learn a little bit more about um, the department of which I was working in. And had I not have known um, 
um, from networking and going to events and creating these relationships with my mentor and um, some of the folks that I know at the agency I work for, I don't think I would have um, shined as much in the interview process and put together a really great application. Um, and I know that I've applied um, in different places where I didn't necessarily have a, a um, network Um I haven't created a network and I didn't really get as far. So I think going back to the point about, you know, who, you know, um, that's really helpful. And I know that because of who I knew and the, how I created a network um, that helped me to, you know, land the position of where I work today. And I think a past um, unsuccessful networking experience it's, I think for me, um, when I think about unsuccessful um, experiences, I think it's more so from the lack of following up. Um, I know that sometimes we get really excited. Well, I, I'll speak for me. I get, I can, I would get really excited about meeting someone. You know, there's a really great initial um, follow up, and then, you know, the person is interested, and then maybe because of time or commitments, I wouldn't necessarily follow up with that person that I was trying to cultivate that relationship with. And over time, and, you know, growing, growing into my professional career uh, space, I know that consistency is um, important and whatever consistency looks like for you. Um, so I know for me, I just make sure that I make an effort, especially if I'm really interested in, you know, um, initiating a relationship or trying to connect with someone that I don't just follow up, you know, that one time, but I keep that relationship going so that it builds into something that's, you know, not necessarily just from the professional space, but it's organic where um, I think to your previous point of kill in, the, in one of your slides where you have just this organic relationship where you're checking in just to see how that person is. And it's not necessarily just about, you know, professional opportunities. So I think that that's probably one unsuccessful experience that I've had and more so on my part where I, I, I didn't follow up as I should. So, so uh, just before we move on to the next question, I have a quick follow up question. Um, we have a little bit of time. Anybody can answer this. What if now I'm an extrovert. I, I can talk to anybody. And I love talking to people, uh, as you can tell. But um, what if I'm an introvert, though? What if I'm what if I find myself being a little shy? What if I have a little bit of an introverted personality? I mean, then what? How do I navigate networking um, as well? I can speak as an introvert. I am a very introverted person. I think sometimes I can um, hype myself up in professional settings, but I'm, I'm definitely an introvert. I know for me, I think it's been a little bit easier in the virtual space to um, network because I think it's easier for you to kind of do some target um, outreach of who you would want to connect with. So you can, um, you know, have that initial um I guess the initial trying to create that initial meeting by email or LinkedIn or um, some community, like some of the social uh, media spaces that you've mentioned in your previous slide, Akil, um, where it doesn't feel as intimidating. I know if it's in-person events, I typically say that I you don't you don't need to necessarily network with everyone in the room, but maybe be strategic about who you decide to. So maybe if you if you know that you can find three to four good people that you would want to connect with. I know that that usually works for me versus feeling like you need to go and shake hands with everyone in the room, um, which you want to make sure that you're you're not doing that anyway, just because you want to try and, and be able to follow up with those relationships. But I think um, for the introverts out there, for me, I think it's easier to kind of narrow down who you would want to reach out to and you can um, follow up in the email and schedule like a 15 minute uh, Zoom uh, conversation or maybe a 10 minute Zoom conversation. I know that that has been helpful uh, for me. And I think that especially since we are in this virtual space, a lot of people are way more receptive to meeting virtually because, you know, they sometimes, especially if we're working remotely, we miss that connection of just talking to people and being able to network. Um, so I think that you I've been able to receive a welcoming response from folks that I have uh, reached out to. 
Um, and I, I feel a lot more comfortable too, because it's, you know, one-on-one versus having to be in maybe a social setting where it's a lot of people. And I feel like, Ooh, I, I don't know who, who should I talk to next or, or things like that. I think it's a lot easier to help with that relationship, especially when you're one-on-one with someone. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Sashin. We'll go on to the next question. So for the next question, you all are well established in your professions and probably have other young professionals interested in connecting with you. What types of interactions at networking events have made you want to connect with a contact for mentoring or interviews or anything of that nature? Um, For me, I think authenticity is something that I gravitate towards, Um, you know, just with getting to know the other person on on the side of who I'm talking to and and building a genuine connection has been uh, definitely a a key way of like really, really finding the people that I want to continue associating with. So once again, you know, just building a genuine relationship, finding common interests uh, to just build rapport and and continue to grow off of and then following up with that individual, um, either you or them following up, you know, within 24 hours. Something I'd add is, um, you know, being familiar with the person you're talking to, uh, you know, from the architecture industry and uh, an example would be uh, at the Maryland Career Fair, you know, if you were to go up to somebody at a firm's booth, having done a little bit of research ahead of time, you know, familiarizing yourself with that firm, their work, some of their projects maybe um, would go a long way in not only starting a conversation with them, but also helping them be able to talk about their work and get to know you better and what your interests are. Um, and along that line too, um, if any architecture students are on here, you know, having a portfolio that really might impress somebody that you're handing it to and a portfolio that you're proud of goes a long way. All right. And then we will go to our final question. Final question is, and I know we've kind of already talked about it a little bit but if you can say it again so we've networked we've shake shaken hands you know we've we've you know gotten each other's phone numbers or index cards or whatever the case may be what are strategies that you can keep to keep what are strategies that you can do to keep your network strong once you've made good contacts So I know, like, for example, Sashin has already stated one of the main things is making sure you follow up, you know, making sure you're consistently following up so that people can know, hey, you're thinking about them and you don't lose that interest over time. Time kills all deals. So we want to make sure we keep that deal going and in fruition. Are there anything, any other strategies uh, that come to mind to keep your network strong? I would add on to that, Akil. Um, I know for me, what really helps is I make, um, I set time on my calendar. So um, if I, for example, maybe once every two weeks or maybe um, after I initially meet someone, I figure out, okay, when's the best day that I uh, would want to follow up with them. And I think for me, if I put it on my calendar or if I put it, you know, on my to-do list, it makes me know that that's something I need to actually do versus if I think about it, then, you know, something else may come up and then I may forget. And I think once I have like this um, time set on my calendar um, to consistently follow up, it helps me to create a pattern. And then after I create that pattern, it becomes a little bit more organic. So I know I did that, for example, with one of um, my, my mentors where I would say, oh, too much time had gone past. And um, once I started putting it on my calendar, it became not only did it become routine, but my mentor also would follow up too. So I think it creates a routine for myself, but then also it keeps 
Uh, it helps to create a routine of following up for the person that you want to connect with too. And then it becomes organic um, where we're not necessarily putting stuff on our calendar. We're saying, oh, how just checking in, how are things, you know, how, how are things going? How are you? And things of that nature. So I think that for me, the calendar helps to build a pattern of consistency and then the consistency pattern just or automatically, it's routine for me. So I don't necessarily, it's, it's like second nature to me. Um, I kind of want to add to that, like using, you know, technology to your advantage. Um, like whenever I get a business card or something like that, um, I use an app called Cam Card and I always just scan it in and I take notes. So like whatever the conversation was, if they mentioned something, they're into this sport, that sport, or, you know, they have kids, things of that nature. Um, people really resonate with, you know, those that remember things about them. Um, so like if you strike up a conversation two weeks later and like, oh, how was, you know, your daughter's recital? Like that's how the conversation ended. Now you're picking back up and you're helping to, again, organically grow that relationship um, and then keep the conversation going. Yeah, networking is, is sort of an exercise and you kind of have to keep working on it to keep it strong and keep your network strong, right? So not only reaching out to your existing contacts, but also reaching out and trying to find new contacts to grow your network. Um, but like Sashina and Richard said, you know, following up and sort of making a habit of reaching out and connecting with people on a somewhat regular basis is a good way to do that. All right, all right. So we're gonna leave the slide on here real quick. Um, I think at this time, I'd like to, uh, open it up to questions uh, from the audience. So feel free to put any questions in here in the chat um, and I will you know, read out a few or, or a couple or whatever the case may be. Um, so feel free to send the questions. I'll go ahead and ask one, uh, the first question and this is for, for the panelists and, and whatnot. Uh, we have a question that says, what if I'm on the hiring side of the table and having trouble finding people who are interested in working in working in my company. I am a small business owner in the construction industry. LinkedIn is not working. So how 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 would you say? So this is more of a um, still networking, but on more of the recruiting side. If you can imagine you're a small business owner, you're trying to get people, and LinkedIn is not really working. What what are some strategies of maybe maybe hiring as well? This is an interesting question. Good question. Um, I think one thing that I would say that, especially in this virtual space that has seemed to be um, helpful is Facebook groups. Um, I know that what's interesting, and, and I know for me personally, I um, don't really utilize uh, Facebook as much just on the personal side of things, but I find that the groups, depending on your interest, um, depending on your profession, you can really find really great people to potentially work with, um, or you can post questions to. And um, depending on the industry, like I know that there, um, I'll just speak just for the, from the planning side of things. I know that there's uh, planners, um, women planners uh, association, there's a women planning group. So I think based off of certain interests, um, there's a housing planning groups. So there's different types of groups, depending on um, what you're looking for. And I think that if you're, maybe if you look into construction groups, um, or women in construction, just as an example, not to say that that would be a, a place that you would be interested in. But I think that that helps to kind of target um, who you would be looking for. And sometimes within those groups, people pose questions where they're looking for to hire someone or they're looking for a resource. So I think that that um, is one non-traditional way that we don't necessarily think about, but it can be really effective. Um, and you can also, like I said, uh, tailor your search uh, based on your interest or what you're looking for. I know that's um, has definitely uh, been helpful for me um, professionally and just things that I have been looking for or needing help with outside of, you know, my professional uh, space um, within, you know, planning um, where I've been able to ask questions and get 
um, you know, the right resources uh, for me from other like-minded individuals or people who may be interested in working with you. So I think that would be one example um, off the top of my head that I think would be worth uh, looking into if LinkedIn um, wasn't uh, giving you the results you were looking for. All right, did anybody else want to add on to that? I'll just add one thing to it. I think, you know, participating on this panel and asking that question is a good thing. Uh, you've got probably lots of students who are looking for jobs on this panel or participating here today that are looking for jobs. So, you know, maybe you might get somebody to reach out to you from, from this event tonight. Um, so participating in events like this is good. Um, and maybe reaching out to the school to post a job posting in the newsletter or going to the career fair would also be helpful. Okay, all right. Um, looks like we don't have too many questions, more interaction, which is fantastic either way. I'll just read out a couple, a couple of things that kind of stood um, to me um, was uh, someone said, I just learned that more than 80% of jobs are filled by networking, only 20% by direct application. So who you know is hugely, hugely important. Um, uh, and then another person also said, from, from a fellow introvert at in-person events, make sure you find the fellow introvert in the room and please go talk to them. They'll be so happy you did. Introverts are often on the perimeter of the room awkwardly looking around. So if you feel as though that you are an introvert, go find the other uh, introvert in the corner of the room if, if that makes you feel comfortable, or you could take the advice of, you know, the panelists, e either, whichever one makes you feel comfortable. But again, you just want to remember networking, all it is, is just, this is just a conversation. Um, that, that's all it really comes, comes down to. Um, somebody else just said, I think LinkedIn groups can be helpful to and finding great candidates. So for the question that uh, we just that was just asked about, um, you know, having owning a construction company and whatnot, um, you know, that LinkedIn groups could be helpful and other social media groups um, could be helpful as well. Next slide. So in review, in review, you want to make sure that you keep in touch with your network. Again, keep, keep in touch, keep in touch, keep in touch. Don't forget the people that have helped you. Don't forget about the people that you made connections with um, because that will continue to strengthen your bonds uh, between people. And again, the, the more people that you know, it, your network will expand and then you'll be introduced to other people and someone else can introduce you to other people and it just multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. Make sure you look presentable, okay? You know, so if your industry calls you to, wear a collared shirt and look nice and presentable make sure you iron it make sure you look great make sure you, make sure everything is good whatever makes you feel comfortable make but make sure that you look presentable so that again you have the chance to open your mouth when you walk in the door that is very very important you don't want people to judge you before you can even express how smart and talented you are don't be shy don't be afraid to share your skills you, we're all professionals here. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know, what you will learn once you go out and start, you know, talking to people and, and just expressing yourself. You have a skill, whether you realize it or not. You are in school learning about, about architecture, learning about planning, learning about real estate development, okay? So you have a skill. And, and also, I mean, to, to, in order to equip that skill um, with more knowledge, you have to go out, ask those questions. Don't be afraid. Again, it's, we're, it's just a conversation. And most importantly, last and certainly not least, please have fun. It, it's fun. This is fun. Again, we're just talking, uh, right? You know, but, but have fun. It doesn't have to be all stiff and rigid. Um, you know, if someone is not really wanting to give you advice, okay, smile and move on to the next person. It is okay. There's going to be someone that is going to most definitely, definitely, definitely help you out. Okay, so, um, and, and also last and certainly not least, since we're in the spirit of having fun, make sure to connect with people, um, you know, within the chat and make sure to send your email or whatever the case may be. Um, because again, you, you never know where you can 
go, you know, if you know how to effectively network. So next slide, that concludes. Uh, that concludes the presentation uh, for today. I hope everybody is learning a lot through career week. I hope everyone's staying warm. I hope everyone's staying safe in the midst of the pandemic. And on behalf of the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation on and behalf of the MAP Plus D Alumni Network Board, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for coming out to this event tonight. Thank you so much, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take it easy. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Got all the, I hope all you got all your questions answered. Um, this is Erica Belser again. Um, I wanted to thank Akil and Sashin and Richard and Kyle um, for coming out tonight, even though they didn't come out. 